on staring like a doll without a smile and I fall even deeper in debt. Brandon, we're thrilled to have you here at the National Music Center. It's great for you to, to be here to share your music, uh, your talent, uh, your stories, especially where you come from and the community you come from as well. So some of our viewers might not know a lot about uh, electric religious. So what, what do you usually say to explain, particularly the name? I mean, yeah. what, what is it about? The name is actually derived from a Jimi Hendrix quote. The quote is, when I get up on stage, that's my whole life. My music is electric church music. And if by church you mean religion, then I am electric religion. And so I took that because A, Jimi Hendrix is one of my favorite artists of all time. He's always inspirational every time I listen to him. And I just love his spirit and the way that his music you know, spreads like love and peace and finding peace through music. And so like my music's not religious music at all. Um, it's rock and roll music, but that name is something that means means a lot to me for its almost hidden meaning. Take me to the clouds, I want to see your scars. Are you Madonna or the lily of the Nile? And I fall even deeper in love with the Mohawk. You brought up like spirituality and, and music and, and there's also a connection between healing and music that you found, you know, as an artist. Can you share about that a bit? I mean, like everybody on planet Earth goes through things. They go through trials and tribulations and heartbreak. And they, you know, they have success as well. And like, even when like somebody gets married, the first thing that happens is they play a song when they're going down the aisle. When somebody passes away, their, their favorite song is being played in remembrance. And so like, for me, music was just a way of combining all my emotions into one thing and that like that's pretty healing for for me personally a few years ago when i was like rediscovering who who i sort of am as a person a lot of that went back to my identity as a metis person um, which had stayed largely unexplored um, for a long time in my life and so when i started writing songs through a lens through the perspective of a modern urban metis person i was able to reconcile a few missing pieces in my life from the past. And so that's that's how I found healing through music. If I could show you how I feel, I'd hear sweet heaven sing your song. It's through learning about who my family was, where what we've been through, where we've come from, that I suddenly had an outlet of an outpouring of songs and stories to tell because of these conversations and this information that I was getting from my mom. You don't see, you don't see it, you don't know, you don't feel it, you don't come, you don't suffer, you don't fall like the rain. Love has so many faces, and I wonder what my place is before you get to love me. A few hearts of God. And the National Music Center is such a beautiful and important. Um, like the word behemoth comes to mind. It's a machine that is just so beautiful and complex and intricate that it's inspiring to be here. Just being here is inspiring. As it sounds right now, just like being amongst peers is really important. Other indigenous people that you can relate to is very important. Um, and the support of the mentors who, who become peers, who become friends, who become lifelong people that you have relationships with, um, that's, that's really important. And that's sort of like why I insist on applying for every incubator that I possibly can because of the, the fact that the music industry is such a relationship heavy industry that like, you mean my only job is to come here and make friends? Okay. <laughs> you